Today I get to check out a product that I have been waiting for. I've been waiting for someone to make such a product that works as well as this one works and does everything without requiring the use of a computer to archive video. Let's check it out. I received the package from Amazon. Looks like Amazon says open here. I wonder what arrived today. What do we have? What do we have to check out and show you guys today? Is it going to be something interesting? A cloner alliance box. What is this? Let's check it out. There's a good chance that this video is going to get blocked by YouTube because, I mean, they've blocked things of, uh, of a similar nature before. But what this is, is it's a standalone video capture box to record videos, gameplay from any video source. Remote control, you can play back on your saved USB storage device on your TV directly. It supports HDMI, VGA, AV, component input signals, and record. It can be recording videos automatically at scheduled time. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Let's uh, check this out, and we're going to put it to the we're going to put it to work. Let's see what it does. I say that it could this video could easily become blocked because you know some some. Somebody at YouTube will say it, 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 um, it, it uh, is not in their guidelines and their standards because after all, when I showed a, 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 a media box that could play, what was it that I was trying to play? It wasn't copyrighted stuff either, it was just videos off of, off of YouTube. Was it a media box? No, it wasn't. It was software. It was uh, DVD software that could allow you to back up a DVD and could download videos from YouTube. I violated community guidelines and got a community guideline strike because I showed that it could record something off of an online service. So the way that they do this crap, you never know what the hell they're going to do. But here's the box and here's the remote control. And basically this is the video capture device which supports HDMI and storage device, line in, line out, microphone input, source button, snapshot, record, stop, and uh, a power adapter, and it comes with a VGA two component cable, I guess that's what this is. Um, this is going to have another end on it. Okay, I see. This goes to the multimedia input MMI. Looks like HDMI, but it's not. So this is the dongle cable dongle cable plugs in to the MMI port on the side. You see, I figured that out without even looking at the manual. Of course, it tells me what it is. It looks like HDMI, but it's not. It's an analog port that just happens to use the same connector. That would plug into there. That would give you your red, green, and blue video input and audio inputs for analog sources. Of course, it'll also give you your VGA input so that you can record your computer screen and you have a place to put your USB storage whether it be a hard drive or a USB stick and then you got your source input here or source button snapshot button record stop and that's basically all this does is it makes recording what else is in here there's other cables in the box I'm going to power it up and we're going to play around with this thing and uh, we'll do some recording of non-copyright material, not copyright material, because you know we don't want to get, uh, we don't want to have the YouTube police clamping down on us. So I'm going to record some stuff that's my own content or some stuff that's off of TV that is not copywritten. In other words, it'll be TV commercials. I'm sure. I think I can probably get away with recording some uh, TV commercials. But uh, we want to see how this looks, so I'm going to record it in, in uh, HD, and um, we'll uh, punch some files in and 
see whether I'm able to uh, import them into my editing software. What does it say here for our specifications? How does it record? Well, it tells us, first of all, we connect our TV to the output. We can connect an in, in input into the HDMI in or through the multimedia input, MMI. Uh, we can support, it'll support uh, NTFS, FAT32, and EXFAT for your output source. And uh, it says here, connect your HDMI between your video player and your Alliance, Pro, uh, Alliance uh, Cloner Alliance Pro Box. Do not connect an HDMI cable to the MMI port. It won't work. Uh, yeah, do you think? Because it's an analog input. And uh, do, 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 do. I probably got to get some software for this thing too, which might be fun because um, um, I don't have uh, Windows 10 and I'm sure it requires Windows 10 to operate. But um, it says get free bundled software to record or live stream videos with a Windows PC. Well, I won't be doing that because I'm sure that the software is uh, only going to be compatible with Windows 10 or a Mac. And I'm running Windows 7. So maybe try it on my laptop to see whether it will record onto my laptop. But um, that's how you connect your computer, you know, to, to PC. So there's, a, there's a, an output here to go to your PC right there. So HDMI, or sorry, USB to the PC so that you can live stream. But I'm going to test this out more for the ability to capture onto an external storage because that's what really interests me, being able to take an analog signal coming in, whether it's an HD signal or a composite signal, and put it onto a memory stick. That's what I'm most interested in a device like this for, is being able to record analog or, or digital video and make a file that's compatible. All right, I've got the unit hooked up in the shop here. I'm going to plug it in. Ooh, it lights up green. Cloner, it says. And I'll select the HDMI input on my TV. Oh, now it turned blue. So let me just switch my inputs and figure out how to do it on the set. Okay, I'm on HDMI 2. We'll see what I see on the screen. I see no signal because I'm not feeding this thing any signal just yet. So I'm going to give a, a signal to the unit. We'll try a variety of different signals and uh, see what it does. All right, I've got the unit plugged into my cable box. I'm just going to record something from the news channel. I'm going to plug in a, a, a USB stick. This is a 128 gigs. It is formatted in uh, EX fat. And I have not even put any batteries or anything into the, the uh, remote control. I'm going to push the record button here and see if it will record. So it should be recording right now. And the light is flashing, which is indicating that it is recording. I've got the picture is looping through. So it's been recording now for 19 seconds. If we look up on the top corner of the screen, and that if that recording is now taking place. I'm, let's say I'm, I'm dealing with the news because I think that probably we're going to be pretty safe recording the news. But this is recording from the HDMI input. So I'm going to let this record just for a bit. And then we'll try some other signals. I'll try some component signals. And I'll try some, um, I'll try some composite video signals. I might even try plugging in a PAL signal from that beta cam that outputs in PAL. And we'll see what it does what type of files it creates. So this is a recording I'm now making from HDMI. If I press the record stop button on the front or on the unit itself, just press the button and that record indicator should go off. There, it says saving. And that should be now saved to the USB stick. Saturday night at the um uh, celebration. You know, he had conciliatory remarks to all of the people that ran. He thanked every one of them. He talked about the things they'd done for the country and I think embraced everybody to come back in the fold. I'm also going to try to record some protected content. See, and I, I won't be obviously able to show you guys this, but I want to see whether it will do it myself. So I'm going to, I'm going to select some protected content and we'll see if it will record it. And, um, 
I'll also try recording a Blu-ray disc. Again, I won't be able to show you guys that because, well, that'll immediately become make the video banned. But I want to see for my own satisfaction, will it do it or not? Even though it can operate with a USB stick, I would think that you'll probably get better performance out of a hard drive. So I'm going to do another recording on the hard drive. I'm going to record both the on-demand program and I'll record from the news. So I just started recording from the news. You can see the hard drive slashing. It's recording. I'm going to let it record for a few minutes. I'm going to try that on-demand content. Record for a couple minutes on the on-demand content. And then uh, we'll try some other stuff. I'll try some analog video input from both composite as well as component inputs. And uh, we'll try some stuff from a Blu-ray player, as I say. We'll see what it does, what it will and what it will not record, and what resolution it's recording. It should be recording this at uh, 1080, is what it should be recording at, as that's what the output of the cable box is. So we'll see what the quality looks like. I'm most interested in a product like this in the archiving business, for archiving tapes. So in the past, I've been quite unimpressed with a lot of the devices designed for archiving. They've fallen well short of what they could have delivered. I've been using a Hopodge HD PVR for probably about 10 years. And it's probably one of the best that I've used. It'll do component video and composite and S video, which has been very good over the years and I've used it for a lot of recordings from component based sources so I'm anxious to see whether this little device will measure up especially with the simplicity that you don't even need the remote control other than to change inputs and so forth but you can play back directly from here and we're gonna try that we're gonna play some recordings back so I've been recording from the news now for it's actually TV commercials that are running now so I can actually let these run because I don't have to worry about any type of, uh, of content matches on commercials. We're going to check it out and play it, play it back and see how it plays directly out of the box because it, it will play back on the TV as well. You can operate this as basically like a, a an HD recorder. But what I'm really curious in is how well it will handle protected content but then again I I won't be able to tell you I won't be able to show you any of that I'll tell you if it doesn't how does that sound if it doesn't work I will tell you it doesn't work if you don't hear me say it doesn't record protected content then you can assume that it does we'll leave it at that so I've just selected playback I've recorded a couple things these are both off of HDMI and if I want to play it back, I just select which one I want to play. I can't play that one. Well, maybe I can, I can maybe play this part of it. That's probably all I can play from that. But I can certainly play these commercials. And as you can see, they're playing back perfectly on the TV recorded directly to a hard drive I'll try and import these into the video too and see how they look if I bring up my info we'll see that the recording is a 1920 by 1080 at 60 progressive so it's recording the same output that's coming out of the cable box in full resolution I'm really impressed right now that it can record an HDMI stream and do it without skipping any frames at full quality. So far, I'm impressed. Let's see how it handles analog sources. I'm gonna try the schedule. It's got a schedule button on here. I wanna try the schedule recording and see what that does. I probably have to set a clock or something out here. Let's see, how do I get back to here? I hit the return button. That takes me back to live TV. 
I hit the schedule button. What does schedule do? Schedule recording. Okay. I guess I have to probably set the clock on this thing because it probably isn't set up. So let's just go here. And I gotta set the. I gotta. I guess I gotta set it. And top. Figure out how to set this thing up. There we go. So record resolution, bit rate. You can adjust your levels as well. I go down to system settings. System time, here we go. Go down to system time. It said 2023. They're selling it in the future. 9, 12 is today, so. And the time, it's a 24 hour clock. It is now 16.43. There we go. All right, now if I go over to my show time, no, I don't want to have the time showing, although you could select it so that it shows the time up on the screen, as you can see, but we don't need to see that. I'm going to go back to my system settings here. Where's my system settings? Top. Go over to the top here. Select a recording. Schedule. Okay, so now you go down and you select your date. say 40 I'll go I'll set it for like 16:47. then we got to set our our off time which is kind of silly 9 it's got to be set to after right now I can set it to say 16:50. this equals white once you've got a, a real time so if I set it for 16:47, to 16:50, and then click out of it there now if I press the OK button it should be set. There we go. So I hit hit uh, my back button, and at 1647, it should start recording, which is uh, as we saw before. It's uh, currently got today's date on there, 1645. So now we just have to wait, and in about uh, two minutes or less, this should kick in and start recording and record for three minutes. So we're gonna let it record and see if it does. I'm liking this thing already. You can set it to record something off air from your cable box if you don't have a DVR. I mean, it, it'd be much easier to record it on your DVR and then play it back and just record it onto your USB if something you wanted to keep. But uh, if you did not have a DVR or a PVR, you could set this unit up to record, giving it a start and stop time, just like an old VCR and it's gonna record, or at least it should record, right onto the hard drive. So we'll just let this thing sit here, and it should come up and say recording in about another minute, and record for three minutes. Okay, we well see it just kicked in to record. And it should record for the next three minutes. Okay, I'm gonna record a Blu-ray disc. Probably all I can show you of that. When you plug in your source, It'll tell you what resolution you're recording in. You can also change it. So it's in 1080. Right now, these these portions obviously don't have any copy protection on them, but the movie itself, it will. All right, this time I'm going to hook it up to a VCR using the AV input. So I'm going to push the AV button on here to select AV input. All right, so this is my JVC tape. Record my JVC. Um, demo tape that's good enough I can record this I can record this all day long and twice on Sunday and not have to worry now I didn't I didn't press the 4x3 button so I guess it's gonna try to record it as a 16x9 I don't know if I can switch it to 4x3 there we go I pushed the 4x3 button on here and that changed the aspect ratio probably change on the recording as well I'm gonna let this record for a bit I say then I'll try 
I'll try a tape that I know has macro vision on it and we'll see what it does uh, this tape is a good one for a, a, a good one for demoing this just because this tape is deteriorated it's got lots of dropouts we'll see how this handles the dropouts again because I'm ref I'm reviewing this as a capture card for archiving I'm not reviewing this as a capture card for gamers I know that their gamers love these things because they like they think people like to watch their gameplay on the internet I don't know maybe some people do like to watch gameplay but um, I'm not reviewing it as a device for gameplay although I'm sure it works just fine for that I'm reviewing this more as a let's see how this will archive your existing footage from different sources and how the results turn out so now that I've been talking about this for a while I think that's probably enough time so I'm going to press the stop button on the remote again I could do it on the box itself as well because there are buttons on the front of the box to do exactly that as we saw before you can select your source it will cycle between HDMI, VGA, uh, component, and AV. You can take a snapshot, which will take a, a picture of what is currently passing through the device. And, of course, record and stop. So, it's a great, as long as the quality of this thing is as good as I hope it's going to be, this is a great solution because it's a one box no PC needed you don't even need the remote you plug in your device you plug it into your TV even if your TV's only got HDMI inputs this will take your analog inputs and convert it to HDMI so next I'm going to connect it to a component source and then finally we'll hook it up to a computer and I'll play some stuff off my laptop and record that as well so next component for the component test, I'm going to be using the component outputs from my HD uh, HDV player, my high definition tape player. This is an old video I shot years ago. I don't even know whether this video ever went into production. It may have just been shot on tape and it may not have even ever got edited. So you might be seeing some footage on here that I never finished or never got around to. It's an old VCR that I was working on countless years ago. And it may have been one that was just filed away and never got completed because I've been known to do that. I'll start on something and um, I'll put it away and archive the footage and then come back to it another time and work on it some more and uh, pick up where I left off. And this was shot uh, using a three chip um, HTV camera. So the quality should be pretty good. Now this player has both component outputs and HDMI so we're going to do it with component first so I'm going to switch the source to component input and I see a picture do I hear sound through the TV I'm just wondering whether it has to go through a different input for sound or whether it goes through these regular inputs okay, okay we're back on this TV 1730 again after a long absence PV 1730. I knew I had one of those kicking around somewhere. Let's just do the recording. I'll hit record. <coughs> okay, I'm going to record this. The color bar is included. We'll do this both through um, component as well as through um, HDMI. So here's the component. Okay, okay we're, we're back on this PV 1730 again after a long absence. Just as being uh, off the. I've got the display turned on, so let me just turn that out. A long time. Probably upwards of a year or more uh, since I did the original base shooting. And okay, so I'm going to stop. This, this I'm going to stop it now, and I'm going to pick up. I'm going to plug it in HDMI. After it sits for a while, it tends to uh, get deteriorated. I don't know if I ever published this video or not. Got it on tape. I don't even remember when I recorded this. Uh, I don't know if it tells me here when I recorded it. I'm just looking at my info status check. No, it doesn't, doesn't tell me anything. I guess the clock wasn't set on the camera when I made the recording, but this is probably five or six years ago that I made this recording. It was before I had the overhead jib. I was using my, um, this was using my HDV camera to shoot this. So it was probably before I even uh, got my first uh, SD-based camera. But 
anyway. That's uh, PV1730. Yeah, we used to say it was the greatest machine that Panasonic ever made. Uh, greatest pain in the ass to record. Greatest machine that had the most number of failures. You see what I'm pointing out there? That's where that rubberized sticker was there. It eats the traces. If someone's trying to sell you one of these machines, don't buy it. Okay, I'm just warning you. They are just an absolute nightmare to keep these things running because they just they were so complex and they had all this circuit glue in, as you can see there. Yeah, it was uh, it was a nightmare. Anyway, I think that's probably enough recording from this, so you guys can analyze it. So I'll stop that recording and we'll do a VGA test next. Well, I guess I'm not doing the VGA test because I don't have a 15-pin male-to-male adapter cable. So, uh, because I don't have a cable, I probably do, it's on a monitor somewhere, but I'm not going to go and uh, find a monitor and steal the cable from it to hook this up. Because uh, all my monitors I've been using for the last several years are, are HDMI. So I haven't used a VGA cable. I know I've got one somewhere, on an old monitor somewhere, but um, um, I'm not going to bother looking it up for this so I guess we can't test VGA but we certainly tested everything else so let's go through and we'll just click on some of these recordings and uh, see how it works so this was made off of TV Playback looks pretty smooth to me. This is my jam. On demand. That worked. Uh, the next file was, this was the timed recording, the timer recording. So it came on and recorded at the specified time for three minutes is what I set it for. The next one was a, uh, I believe, a Blu-ray disc. It was. This is off a of VHS tape. Before I switched it to um, uh, 4x3, so this is recording off of VHS. Actually, it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to hit that button and change it from 16 by 9 to 4 by 3 momentarily. And that's why I hit the button to record in 4 by 3. Actually, that looks pretty good. There was this one. About all I can show of that, if anybody you know what that movie is. This is the component input <coughs> recorded from my HDV tape. The final one here was, this is from the HDMI input from the HDV tape. So playback is fine. Playback looks good on a TV. Okay, the last thing I'm going to try to record is I'm going to take and try to record something off of that beta cam. This is a PAL camera. I'm going to play that same tape that I put up before. We're going to capture it with the cloner box. So I'll hit record. Let me hit play. It is recording PAL quite nicely. It'll be interesting to see how this looks once it's output as an MP4 and whether I can import it and how it handles it. Does it do frame rate conversion to 60 frames? What does it do? We'll find out, but I'm gonna let this record here for a bit and then we'll, we'll do all the comparison. But it does capture PAL and NTSC. Now when I'm playing this PAL tape, I'm seeing a fair bit of motion judder. So I get a stinking suspicion it is converting it from 25 frames to 60 progressive is what it's doing. You can see some motion judder on the display here. I'm curious as to what the uh, the actual recording is going to look like once I finish the recording. All right, I've just finished capturing 
video on both NTSC and PAL, high definition and standard definition using the Cloner Alliance Box Pro, as this one's called, with the remote control. I like it, they, someone didn't stick the sticker straight, you know. It's um, little things like that that some people would look at and take exception to, that the sticker on the remote wasn't stuck on straight, but hey, I won't bother with that. Uh, I'm going to shut down the hard drive now, take the hard drive in, and uh, we're going to capture the files from the... Uh, well, we already captured the files. I'm just going to transfer the files over, and uh, we'll edit this together and see how the uh, video looks. Imagine if we ever got to meet. We would be such good friends. Best friends. Advantage 2. Kills fleas through contact all month long. I mean, he's a wreck without me. Advantage 2. Fight the misery of biting fleas. We love deck season in Canada. For over 40 years, we have been providing the ultimate in deck leisure and relaxation. Our products are Canadian made and maintenance free to enable you to sit back, relax and enjoy your deck. Global Decking Systems. This is my jam. We need every hand on deck. Is that an eagle? It's my sidekick. Oh my God, he's hugging me. This is amazing. Every time we turn around, one of you is doing something stupid. You said you were going to be chill. Do I not look chill to you right now? The biggest hits from Buena Vista Home Entertainment are coming to Blu-ray Disc. In fact, some of the best sound design in the market today can be found on computer games. Good thing you'll be enjoying that sound to the max with JVC's exclusive Hyper Surround Sound. This incredible feature creates the impression of 3D sound without the need for rear speakers. Back on this PV1730 again after a long absence. This has been uh, off the bench for a long time, probably upwards of a year or the correct drive signal. So I was thinking about this. As I say, I haven't I haven't done anything with this thing since the last time we looked at it. And you guys haven't seen the video yet because it's been sitting on my computer since I shot it. Anyway, I uh, I went into the motor board here, and if we look down, there was uh, this capacitor here over to my right. Well, you'll see, if you look at the square here where this was, you can see it looks like those traces may have been damaged for the, where this double-sided tape sticky back that was holding down this capacitor was and I think maybe we're gonna retreat we're gonna trade redo the trace here solder a jumper wire over it or bridge over it or something and see whether that is going to change the symptom I'm having 1730 again after a long absence this has been uh, off the bench for a long time of a year or more uh, since I did the original Okay, we're recording. Let me hit play. Yeah, I'm out here at the park with the beta cam. We'll just zoom in and focus. It's always a nice thing about these manual lenses is that you can zoom in. Oh, look, there's a B. Let's get a real good close-up of him. Where did he go? There he is, and he flew away. Telling me the lens settings. Right now it's gone to f1.7. We're now at f2.8, 1.7, f2.4. Right, so I got the the uh, viewfinder here. Now I don't even know if I've got gain on this camera. I don't think there's any gain on here. Shouldn't be any gain. Let's just see here. 
gain 9 dB, gain 18 dB, gain 0. There's another switch up here for when it's really dark. Turbo gain, of course, it, you wouldn't need that, this out here, but in the dark, you'd use the turbo gain. Which is probably like 30 dB gain. I do have that caution indicator in the display, I don't know what it means, but it appears to be working, it's recording. Take another walk over to more of the water here. Gotta watch my step. These ducks are not toilet trained. Ha 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 ha. Now this is where a camera like this really will shine. And if this was an HD camera, it would just look beautiful. When you've got a good lens like this, when you get dynamics, like we're shooting into now. This is where they I think that will about do it for this one. I hope you guys have enjoyed this demonstration of the Cloner Alliance Box Pro. I think it's doing an excellent job. And even this PAL footage looks fantastic off the beta cam. But it's an easy way to capture analog video it doesn't get any simpler than this, folks. Plug it in, plug in your hard drive or your USB stick, and press a button. Nothing could be simpler for capturing video than using this device. No computer necessary. It's as simple as it gets, and the quality that I've seen is fantastic. Anyway... Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. So much nicer if I was using Link to this one is in the description. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.